And those lead to impossibility. Particularly when you have a disability, you tend to reach your limits a lot quicker. Our true journey as athletes with disabilities starts when we reach our limit. That is when our impossible begins. My name is Sam Kelohatev and my journey started in 2003 when I went to the national championships for the physically disabled and I participated there. It was a birthplace of dreams because that took me all the way to the Paralympics where I won a gold medal. It is no different here as we are in Kebeja for the national championships, proudly supported by Toyota. This is a birthplace for dreams. The opening ceremony kicked off on the 23rd of April and a lot of dreams started, a lot of impossible started. This is what happened on the 23rd. For me, the championships is the place where Paralympic sport is born in South Africa, and we got to keep growing. We got to get better with it. We got to grow it to a point where the next generation is coming out. We, I'm an old guy now. I'm going to retire soon. So obviously, it's for the next generation to take on, and we got to show them how important these championships are. Come here, give your best, be the best that you can be. Yes, it all starts here, but it all ends at the Paralympics. That's what we're aiming for: the big event where we can truly shine, actually. The 2021 Toyota Sasa PD National Championships was officially opened by the organization's president, Moki Hrubelar, Toyota Paralympic ambassador and former Paralympic medalist, Peter Badenhorst, and the executive mayor of the host city, Mkaba Banga. The qualification for the Paralympic Games is markedly different from that of the Olympic Games, and every opportunity for athletes to prove that they are best placed to represent their country is taken seriously. The annual games, which in 2021 featured boccia, powerlifting, judo, goalball and athletics, also welcomed athletes from Botswana, Lesotho and Namibia. The track and field meeting was internationally sanctioned and offered athletes the chance to better their world rankings, which will go a long way in proving them worthy of selection for their country, but also potentially opening more slots for South Africa at the Paralympic Games. The country's Paralympic Games chef de mission, Leon Fleischer, explains. Yeah, so, so, so the, for the Olympic Games, if you hit a qualifying time or qualifying distance or whatever is the agreed one, you get the right to go. You still got to be selected, but you at least gone over the first hurdle to get through the door. For the Paralympics, works very different. Um, the Paralympic numbers are capped at four and a half thousand athletes, so therefore you get slots allocated. So, for example, right now we got ten slots allocated for athletics. Right now, we, there's a possibility we'll get more, but on those ten slots, we got over 35 or even more athletes qualified. Now, the only 10 athletes can go, so it makes a very big headache for SASAPD to, to select those athletes and put them forward to SASCOC for selection. So unfortunately, it, it, it is what it is. The games have always been like that. We've always had that problem and we're always going to have that problem. So we just need to deal with it and the athletes that want to make it must make sure they kick the door down for selection. They mustn't be there and there about. They should be like, I'm number one, so I know I'll be selected. The coronavirus cancelled games in 2020, less than a week before they were due to get underway. President of Sasa PD and SASCOC board member Khrubalar explained that the games represent the resilient spirit of athletes with physical disabilities. Yes, we've got our athletes and yes, they're going to perform because they are going to do the utmost best because everybody is going to fight for a slot in the Paralympic Games because they have been put back, they have stood up, they have risen. So now they're going to show us what and why they are called Paralympians. This is a great day for the people of the city, the city of uh, Mandela, uh, to have this great uh, uh, athletes who make what is, it looks according to my eyes, impossible, uh, possible. It's very important for Toyota to be involved with the SACPD National Championships. Toyota globally is now the mobility provider to the Olympic and the Paralympic movement. So to extend that relationship to the local uh, Paralympic organization is very important for us. Toyota is a company or organization uh, involved with mobility and movement of people. And sport is also that, it's, the, it's about movement. So for us, and specifically sponsoring and, and supporting our Paralympic athletes in the Paralympic year is very important. The Games took place across four venues, Westbourne Oval, Pearson High School, Cape Receive School and the Fairview Indoor Sports Centre.
in my time I did a lot of sports but you know I was introduced to judo a sport I never ever understood now what's important about this year's judo competition is that it introduces two of the first athletes that can make history by potentially being the first South African athletes to represent South Africa at the Paralympic Games. It was amazing. They even had a fight together and I was sitting there thinking, my goodness, these visually impaired people can see so far beyond their vision. Judo for the visually impaired at the Nationals was the first tournament for the sport in the country since the national lockdown and it offered judokas valuable time on the mat at the Fairview Indoor Sports Complex. Paralympic judo follows the same rules as Olympic judo, with the difference that judokas start and remain during combat holding each other's suits. Only athletes with vision impairment are eligible to compete, with all side classes B1, B2 and B3 competing together and divided according to the judoka's weight. In November 2019, South Africa's Paralympic hopefuls showed they were on track to qualify for the Games when 2009 junior world champion Jacques Joubert ended fifth and Ndiabo Lamani seventh at the Ipsa Grand Prix in Uzbekistan. They made the most of the national championships. Yeah, I think the first victory is first of all to compete again. It's been 14 months since the last competition for us, so I think to come on the mat and to compete is the first victory. And today it went rather well. I won all my fights, so privileged for that and I'm also thankful. It's good preparation for those to come for the competitions. For this tournament, it was a, let's say, it was a training for me because I didn't fight for 14 months. I just, just trained physical training, just little judo and then this tournament was a good training for me because I'm, prepa I'm preparing for Baku next, next month. It is an international competition for qualifiers for Paralympics. And then the, our last fight, me and, me and Jack, it was a good fight. It, 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 it also, it was intensive because Jack, he, his, his weight he, is up than me because I'm, I'm, I'm under 66, it's under, 80, I, under 81. So it was a good fight for me because um, uh, when I'm fighting with, with my, in, in my division, um, those guys, they're going to they're gonna be lighter than me because um, I'm used to train with the bigger guys. In the last four hours, if I count correctly, this is your third event. <laughs> I mean, where do you even get the energy for that? Because earlier on you were doing track and field and now you are here. Where do you get the energy for this? Uh, the track and field is just for the team. <laughs> Try to keep myself fit and out of trouble. But I mean, the main focus is judo. That's the one we want to qualify for. Uh, I guess it's a mental thing and also just to enjoy it. Um, as long as you enjoy everything you do, that's your energy, your first source of energy. Upcoming competitions, I mean, you still need to qualify for Paralympics. So what upcoming competitions do you have? So we are planning to leave mid-May to Baku, Azerbaijan. That's the first Grand Prix. And then there's one in England mid-June. So those are the two last Paralympic qualifiers where we need to go and accumulate as much as possible points for us to, to secure our place for the, the Paralympics. So the stress is on and the training is on. So we just need to go out there and perform. Not just to qualify, but to go to Tokyo and possibly win a medal. Tokyo, uh, what are your expectations you know, on your own performance? So yeah, um, like I've mentioned, sorry. So even myself and Lamani qualify, we would be the first two judo vision impaired players to go and represent South Africa for judo. So they will be the first victory, but that's just not the, the sole purpose. We want to go and get a medal that, that side. So hopefully gold, silver or bronze, that is the main aim. Definitely, we're going to do it. We're going to do it because th there's no time. We, we, we prepare ourselves because... Uh, I'm gonna make, can I make an example? Me, I'm training four times a day. Uh, definitely, Jack is training maybe two times a day, but I'm staying here in, in, in State of Jack, he's staying in Houghton. But to communicate for our training, so how did you go, all that stuff. So, we definitely show we're going, we're going to qualify and we're going to make history. Oh, it's special. The word 
possibility and impossible is such a cool word to link that with disabilities because we've proven the world with, with our challenges and our disabilities that we can do anything. And I hope that inspires people without having a disability, if, like if you can't see it, it just inspires them to, to kind of focus on what their purpose is and what's God's plan with them in their lives. And yeah, I'm really excited that we can, we can show that to the world today. Now we all know what the COVID pandemic did to the rest of the world. Athletics and sports in general was no exception. Last year there were no national championships. They even postponed Olympics and Paralympics. So this year was the first time ever in the history of our national championships that we had such a small group of athletes. But that never took away from the quality of performances that we had here. I mean, the likes of Diane Bass, Andrew Ney, Charles, you know, Renard, everyone was there to still give the best, uh, the best possible performance. Very happy with everything that they've done, very proud. And again, they continue to inspire the younger generations because even at these nationals, we had new talent. We had this still be a birthplace of dreams for the younger generation. The WPA sanctioned athletics event was an incredible success. 44 senior and age group South African records were set by national athletes, eight African marks were reached and three world records were broken. I had from the morning up and I was very positive for today because I had the African record broken. And it was not a day, yesterday was over, it was not so... Goeie dag vir my, dit was bykie deelleerstelling. Maar vandag het ek een goeie dag gehad en ek het baie geniet. Well, my goals for this year actually is just to get in good enough times in order for me to go to the Paralympics and compete and hopefully come back with a gold medal. And the way I'm, I see it, I'm actually rising to achieve my goals and I'm not particularly happy with my times yesterday but I'm working on it and I'm prospering. Hopefully yeah I think with God on your side and an awesome team behind me you never know what the limit is going to be and I'll run for as long as I enjoy it and at this very moment I'm still enjoying my running a lot. Um, okay so the, the process right today was just to, to put into play what, we, what we've been training for and going through the processes, doing exactly what we've been doing through training and yeah it went well. We um, started off with a, with a PB, um, a couple of centimeters PB and then the big one came in round five which was a 16.07 which is a new SA record and unofficially a new African record so yeah it was good day at the office. I will not say that it mixes on but I think I can really work for anything so I can my for my word do stel and I can offer the gun. I don't have any barriers to tell me to care on my dream to be to be war right now. And yeah, I get on the by the steering, my sponsor for this and help my buyer, my coach and my conditioning coach to good work. So I feel rarig I can buy a fair com. Al is it eerst 2024, maar ik denk kom eens morgen tot 2021. Bobby, congratulations, buddy. World record in PE. Not the best of the weather, but world record. How do you feel? No, I feel elated. Uh, Sammy Sam, Sam uh, very grateful. Didn't feel good, but Dando pushed me, and I just held on for dear life. It looks like you guys came here with a little scheme between yourself and Dando. Coming here with <laughs> who's got eight gears, seven gears. It worked for both of you. How do you really think you guys executed this? I think it was perfect. We worked out our strengths. He told me to go out, give him 20 meters, he will catch and I must just hold on to him when he comes past. And we caught each other at the line, which was perfect. Yeah, you know, the, the, the race was, was good, Sam. Um, I think I um, have to give Mpumi, um, you know, the credit for this race. Um, it was a fast race and, you know, I told Mpumi um, to not wait for me to go, you know, to make sure that I'm chasing him because that's the only way I can ride first times, you know, and, um, you know, I, I really appreciate everyone, not only Mpumi, you know, um, Daniel was also fast in the start, you know, uh, Tebuko was also pushing me, um, you know, so it means that I had a good start because Tebuko was always here beside me, which never happens, you know, he's a 40, 43, um, I don't know what's the 
the new class, but uh, you know, he, he's supposed to beat me in the first hundred, but you know, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, you know, we've been working for this since 2016. Now we're a good start, uh, you know, the kick I have and you know, the fast we have, but the start was always a problem. So I think, I'm, I don't think we're hundred percent there, but we are definitely more further than we were, um, you know, at the beginning. So for me, it was a wonderful race and it was so much fun. For me, it didn't feel like I was coming from behind, you know, yeah. it felt like a lack of race, yeah. My motto is Dinia Best and Code in the Race. And I can't even say, as you hard work and you best do, then you will achieve what you will achieve in the day. The beauty of disability sports is that we can adapt able bodied sports or we can just create completely new sports to accommodate any particular disability that exists. Bocha is one example where the most severe disabilities are accommodated. I mean, for me, it was so new to, to find someone who has a helmet and a stick extending uh, from the helmet and they're able to still control the ball, tell the assistant what to do. It doesn't matter how severely disabled you are. If you have the heart and the passion for it, you can do it. Nothing, honestly, can be impossible as long as the mind and the passion is there. Porsche was a beautiful experience for me. The guy that was playing here uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, Leafy, he uses his feet because he can't use his hands at all to play. So, Porsche is a very empowering sport and it's a very, it'll make you do anything that you want to do because a lot of sports you can't play because of our condition. I mean, I told myself that if I could walk, I would have been a cricket player. You know, I love that sport. And luckily, Botcher empowered me. And throughout the years, Botcher has developed me into a very positive person. And I became a leader as well in, in, in Botcher. I plan on, on playing it for as long as possible. My mom's gotten involved with Botcher. She's uh, my coach. She's a referee, national referee here. Um, I have a good support structure. So, I mean, I've hinted on retiring a few times. And, Everyone asks me why am I thinking because Botcher is my life and they know how excited I get when I play Botcher. So I don't plan and I plan on hopefully going overseas for the third time in my career. Um, you know, I hope one day that I to see South Africa at the Paralympics for Botcher. I mean, I would never stop playing Botcher. I mean, I play Botcher um, like with, with no tournaments. Once a month we have a meet. We move. I have a club that's running called Botcher Bandits in Gauteng. And um, we meet once a month and we have a practice session, we have a bit of fun, you know. So there's never any impossibility to Botcher. This looks like a very difficult sport. Um, it, it looks almost impossible yeah. you know, um, with the severity of some of the disabilities. Um, what would you say to someone who says this is impossible? Well, well, in Baka, it's nothing, it's nothing, nothing in Baka, more in Baka. Anything can happen. Can be unpredictable sometimes. So, yeah. Gold ball is a game of senses, not sight because the players are blindfolded. You have to listen to the ball, you have to listen to your teammates, you have to feel your way around and know exactly where you are. They even make tactical lines so that the players can tell whether they're in the middle, on the left or on the right. They have to basically even look for the poles so that they can touch and position themselves. It's a very silent sport as well because everyone has to keep quiet so that the players can listen to the ball and all the Christmas noises that it makes as it goes towards the goal post. Very, very amazing, truly inspirational how people will literally put their bodies on the line to stop the goal from going in. I don't want you to think that I'm jealous because I don't have hands and I cannot do powerlifting. Anyway, it wasn't about me because when we were there, there was great action from the likes of Maria Combrick. She was there breaking world records on the field 
but because she had some issues with COVID, she ended up doing too much weightlifting in the gym and she decided to try it out here at the birthplace of dreams. Guess what happened? She broke the South African record. Someone else as well who's a visually impaired power lifter, Bunolo, again, delivered amazing action on the deadlift and also on the powerlifting itself. Really, again, I can't do bench press, but this man did not need to see the weights. He just needed to feel it and feel that this is the one that is going to break the impossible and I'm going to get that record. Truly amazing. And then a young lady as well, Mbasa, very energetic. But again, she channeled that energy into breaking the record at the uh, powerlifting championships. Fantastic performance. One day I'm going to train and I'm going to do it myself. Now I'm going to prepare to, I, I want to go to, I'm practicing to participate in Tokyo and I also want to, I, I see myself being in the Paralympics. So um, during COVID, we had a bit of a problem because uh, they were busy resurfacing the Germiston Stadium. So I arranged for a practice ground at the local high school. But due to the COVID regulations, I couldn't go and practice there. So inevitably ended up more time in the gym. And spending more time around the weights led me to this new uh, mistress, which I call powerlifting. And from there on, it just... Um, the love for the sport is just growing. Right, this is now the first time that you compete in powerlifting and you just broke a South African record. How does that even feel? Uh, it's amazing. It's really, uh, I think, um, first of all, I have to say, I just love how well organized the powerlifting is um, and everything just flows so nicely and, and how inclusive and, and um, it's almost like a family, the whole powerlifting community. And it's, it's just, um, almost like a natural progression going from from weights for for the field athletics into a power lifting yes wow. yesterday you broke a world record tell us about that see i'm still smiling <laughs> <laughs> yesterday yesterday everything just stacked up like perfectly it was uh, every single throw for the shot was just so easy and and in the zone and it was so amazing just every time increasing that distance to eventually end up with an 11.15 and everything just felt so light and so easy and I really think it's to do with the fact that I'm spending more time with the powerlifters. I have been doing powerlifting for six to seven years but along the way uh, I had to stop due to unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. So then I started this year to lift again. That's perfect. So it's a good comeback for you to break the South African record. So where to from now? From now on, we want to go to the Worlds. Uh, I want to have my own world record that I'm going to set this year, I think. Um, later on this year, I think August or October, there will be a competition where I will be competing with the Able Boys. So uh, I'm looking forward to break a world record. You would imagine that when we say birthplace of dreams, we're talking about South African dreams. No. We had guys from the neighboring countries come and join us here. The ladies and gentlemen from Lesotho, Namibia and Botswana came here and participated so that they can also qualify for Paralympics. Again, you would think that it is impossible because there's a whole pandemic going on, but they made it possible for themselves, made their way to South Africa and they came here, they participated. This is truly a birthplace of dreams, not just for South Africans, but for Africa. It's not very possible because of this the pandemic COVID-19 because we do not drain very well because of the stadiums are closed so that is the challenge the great challenge we faced so it's my first race to be here and then I did not very well trained so that is why I have performed like what I have done yeah I'm here to qualify because 
uh, at our, our, our country, we still have a problem like this guy said. I think he seemed to apply to us yeah, because of this pandemic. Um, my team did very well. They actually did some personal best and some uh, uh, broken records for South African records are some of them broken. So I feel proud of them and all good. These games cater for the young and the older generation. A 13-year-old coming here and breaking three South African records. How incredible was that from PJ Kloppers? I mean, Simone Kruger, as young as she is, continues to break records in the discus and also on the shot put. Great performances. Kevin Numdu. Gentlemen, I know you work, buddy. Very proud of you. And then you continue, look at the likes of Obed Likese, jumping on one leg, high jump and long jump. It sounds very confusing, but you have to watch this to understand why it's so incredible. And then you get to that amazing race between Umpumi and Untando, breaking a world record side by side, each one for their own class. What an incredible race. What incredible games we've been having. Yes, what, what I always say, what, what, the, what, the mind can, what the mind can believe, the body can achieve. And yeah, I think my first Nationals was in 2008. So it's been a long journey and if you put your mind through, through a, for, to it, you, any, anything is possible and you can definitely achieve it. The championships concluded with a total of 48 South African records being set across two sporting codes. It was a championships unlike any other, in no small part due to the coronavirus. Some codes like CP football were not part of the championships and the closing ceremony, like all the medal presentations, saw winners collect their medals. Gauteng were announced junior and senior athletics winners. Free State won a gold ball floating trophy, while the hosts, Eastern Cape, won the Botcher powerlifting and judo competitions, paving the way for this. Ladies and gentlemen, the overall winning province. In third place, jointly, Free State and Western Cape. In second place, Gauteng. And in first place, the Eastern Cape. Sasa PD President Muki Khobalar congratulated the participants and thanked all partners, sponsors and volunteers. The headline sponsor of the event had a special surprise to ensure development at one lucky school. I to announce that the Toyota Quantum Bus will go to Free State um, Marie de School. Thank you. <laughs> the annual championships will now be the 12-month project for the Gauteng LOC, who will host the 2022 championships. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, as the Eastern Cape hands over the flag to Gauteng. With this, I now declare the National 21 Toyota National Championships for the Physically Disability officially closed. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the championships as much as I did in the last three days. We have seen amazing action, South African records being broken, African records and world records, even in one single race. That was amazing. We wish the athletes all the best towards the Paralympics in Tokyo, as they call it, Tokyo 2020. I'll see you next time. My name is Samgelo Khatte.